Ladies and gentlemen, good evening. Thanks to all the TED workers. You've been doing a magnificent job. It's a great chance, opportunity for me to stand here in front of all of you. So, my name is Leo Iwayama. I'm a Zen monk. I'm running a 600 years old Zen temple in Odawara city. And my idea, which I want to share today, is happiness can be trained physically. My father is German, my mother is Japanese, and after six months, my whole family, I have an admirable brother, we moved to Germany. My parents are running an educational business over there. And I was in Germany until the graduation of high school. Well, I didn't like school so much. I didn't like myself so much. If I look back for the reason, it's probably because I felt like a foreigner wherever I was. I'm a foreigner in Germany. I'm a foreigner in Japan. I always felt a little bit empty and lonely, unsatisfied, unhappy. So, I wanted to fill this emptiness somehow. And I moved to Japan to attend a Japanese university in Tokyo. Well, I wanted just one goal. Make yourself happy and fill this little hole which you have inside yourself. So I tried a lot of things out. I did internships. I did modeling. I did a lot of things. I even participated in business contests. Well, my idea was to print advertisement on toilet rolls. It didn't go that well. And once I even got on the national economic newspaper, I was interviewed quite big, and suddenly I got a call from a CEO of a big company, and he said, Leo, I like, I like you. You want to become a disciple, work out at my company? Please, I teach you. And that was something for me at that time. So I was studying in the afternoon at university. And in the late afternoon, in the evening, I was going to the company. And the CEO taught me marketing, making revenue, hiring people, researching markets. And it felt good. I, I felt, OK, that's maybe the thing I want to do in my life. But there was one thing, there was one thing which didn't go out of my mind. This CEO, he just didn't look happy. He was doing a lot of great things in his life. But he didn't look happy. And I thought to myself, I mean, if you want to fill your hole, if you want to make yourself happy, you have to follow a happy person, right? So, I was a mess. I was a mess in university. I went clubbing, I went drinking, I was lost. And every day was like a Friday. So, my father gave me a call. He gave me a call and he said, Leo, you know what, why don't you go to a Zen monastery? Maybe you find something there. 
And my father was actually a practitioner of Zen meditation. And I just remember, uh, well, he forced me to sit when I was small and a an naughty boy. So I was kind of used to it. I instantly decided, summer holidays, let's go to a Zen monastery. And it was nice. It was nice. It was tough, but it was nice. It was very simple. You didn't have to think about a lot of things. Now, what was so nice about it? The Zen master of this monastery, he looked happy, fulfilled, but he didn't have much. And that's when I decided to become a monk. I said, okay, I want to follow that person because I think that there is something I was looking for. So, I shaved my head, wore a robe, and I was ready to enter the monastery. You'll see. And I went to the monastery. It was very, very tough. We had no TV, no internet, no space, no money, no time. You had meditation, 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 cleaning, 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 reciting sutras, sutras, sutras. 365 days. One year, tough. Second year, still tough. Third year, tougher. Fourth year, tough. Fifth year, tough. <laughs> but now my fifth year, I just remember the story. My Zen master asked me the question, you know what, Leo? Do you know where people are going to go when they pass away? And I got this question. Do you know where you're going to go? Yeah, do you know? Yeah. Do you know? So I answered a lot of I answered, gave a lot of answers to that. Yeah, when you pass away, when you pass away, you go to heaven. Um, when you pass away, you melt into the universe. You become nothing. For half a year, I gave a lot of answers, but I didn't find it. What a pity. What a pity. And my master, he gave me the answer. You know what, Leo? You know what? When people pass away, they are going under the graveyard. Okay, wow. But now I'll be honest with you. I'll be very honest with you. I don't, I mean, I'm a Zen priest, but I don't know where I'm going when I pass away. You only know where you go when you personally are going, fading away when you pass away. That's for the first time when you know where you're going. That's what I think. Now, does that mean there is no paradise? Does that mean there is no paradise? No, I think there is. There is. There is one. Where? Right now. Where are you standing? Here. That's where paradise is. You got to live your life right now as you were in paradise. You making it. You're making it with your hands, with your mind. You're building it right now. Okay? And so, what do you want to have in your paradise? No, you want to live in paradise, right? Okay, okay. You want to live now in paradise. What do you need? What do you need? Money? Who wants money? One hand up. Who wants money? Okay. You can even raise two hands. Yeah. <laughs> I want money, all right? Fame, respect, love, boyfriend, family, okay. Yeah, if you want to live now in paradise, yeah, sure, nice car maybe. But you know, these things are conditioned. What happens if your money fades away? Your happiness fades also away, 
right? So, we are looking for something more unconditional, something never changing happiness. Yeah? Do you think there is? Okay. Now, um, give me about 20 seconds of your time. So, you're sitting on a chair, yeah? All of you sitting on a chair. We're going to make a little practice, you know. So please, sit up straight. Okay? Straight. Straight. Not like that, but like that. And your hands, just fold them, put them here. Relax your shoulders. Relax your shoulders. Your eye view goes down. Everything's blurry. That's fine. And slow abdominal breathing. Your mouth is closed. And while you are breathing in and out slowly, please listen to your breathing. Every time you breathe out, count the number in your mind. Just like... Now I'll ring a bell, and that's the starting sign. Thank you for your silence. Did you hear yourself breathing? Yes? Did you hear it? Okay. Very good. Realizing that you are alive, that is the biggest happiness you're holding in your hands. Your eyes, your lips, your hands, your toes, your teeth, every single cell in your body wants to be realized by yourself. Because that's where the unconditional happiness lies. You can wait, of course, when you get older, when you're in hospital, when you can't move your body anymore, when life fades away then you will probably realize life is beautiful. But you can also do it now. How do you do it? Easy. Find a chair, sit, breathe in and breathe out. Now, that's easy. Okay. And the good thing is you can practice it all physically. It is just a very easy practice. And even if you don't feel so good, if you have a tough time, don't worry. Just do the breathing on a chair and you're feeling better. Because, now here comes the best part. It is scientifically proven when you do the abdominal breathing, a lot of hormones called serotonin will be produced in your brain and they make you happy. 
even if you don't want to be happy. So, again, you can practice happiness physically in whatsoever situation you are. Okay? It is very, very simple. And, I mean, it is almost like training. Okay? It is almost like training. Even if you have tough times, when you're, for example, in hospital, you know, lying there, and you can still breathe in and out deeply, and that makes you happy. Okay, I think, oh, now look, here I'm smiling. Yeah, it's because of the breathing. Yeah, okay. What I want to tell you is, you feel sad sometimes in life. Bad things happen. You can't control life. It doesn't work out the way you want it. People will maybe pass away. You will feel sick, maybe. But don't forget the happiness you're holding in your life. That one won't change. Okay? It will never change. Just remind yourself. You can practice it really very easy physically. Now, sometimes I get a question like that. Why is happiness so important? Yeah. Why is happiness important? Now imagine you are a leader of a country. Imagine a leader of a big country. Would he or she invade another country? Sacrifice hundreds of lives if he or she was happy. I mean, if you were happy, wouldn't you rather give somebody a hand? Wouldn't you rather greet somebody? Yes. Happiness is the element which unites the human species naturally, even more than technology, the law, or economy. So, please, the good thing about it is when you are practicing happiness by yourself, you can make yourself happy and even others also. Thank you very much for listening. Thank you for listening.